West from Puddle of Mud, and you are listening to Brigade Radio 1. Can you take it all away? Can you take it all away? Listening to Brigade Radio One. Kick it off. Yes, brace for impact and put on your seatbelts. We've brought in some epicness. You know her from an episode of From the Set we did earlier in the week with director Mike Lang. Not just good, good enough. But you also know her as Wonder Woman and Justice League, Justice League Unlimited, Injustice. All well, look, there's probably nine hundred, a thousand credits. But let's let her explain some of the awesomeness. Actress Susan Eisenberg. Susan, how are you? I'm um, well. Thank you for that intro. I liked it. <laughs> thank you for being a part of the show today. We're it's no secret we're big fans of yours. We're big fan. You've had the benefit of bringing superior talent, which you offer, to superior writing, making superior projects. It's a win-win-win. I know there's a lot of factors that make awesomeness. Uh, you're also a fan favorite because you're Wonder Woman, and for many people, you're kind of the defining Wonder Woman because you've. You played it with so much edge, I guess, in the Justice League days. Well, you know what? I think there are, um, there's generations of fans of Linda Carter. And yeah. then there's um, people who grew up with the Justice League and, and have met these characters, Superman, Batman, through the series. And then there are people who are now meeting her through Gal in the feature. Right. So it depending on your age um, and how you got introduced to the character, I may be some people's introduction. Right. And, you know, look, all, all variations are fantastic mm-hmm. in their own way. What we loved about your work was it was really well written. And, you know, Wonder Woman played it and or you played it or it was directed in a way where it's going to be the toughest, if not one of the toughest, but the toughest character on the block in a sense. And I love that it was for a, a man with a daughter who wanted to kind of demonstrate, hey, you can be a superhero in all the right ways. That mm-hmm. character in that cartoon, Justice League, kind of defined it. Well, and there was such a, you know, there was such a dearth of those characters before Justice League. Mm. And now they're, you know, Wonder Woman has just not had her day in the sun until recently. And so when you look at Batman and Superman and all the movies and video games and all the the projects built around those two characters, Wonder Woman didn't have any of that stuff. You know what's amazing is, you know... <laughs> I don't know why this is, but you wouldn't have to work very hard to sell me on a Wonder Woman movie or TV show over the last two or three decades. I would have been like, where is it? Mm-hmm. Well, it's, a lot of people were, a lot of fans were like, where is it? Yeah, it's like a no-brainer. Mm-hmm. And Warner Brothers, uh, after my tenure there, tried to do a TV show that it never released. I am sure, knowing the system, how it works, or that there was hundreds of scripts submitted. For whatever reason, they just never pulled the trigger on it. But you sit there and you think, we that's not a hard sell. Right. Us. And it's funny when it comes out, the movie comes out and it was really well received. Mm-hmm. Critics loved it. The box office loved it. And now everyone, somebody actually has, I forget which executive it was, who says, well, now we know we can do superhero movies featuring a woman, female lead. I'm like, mm-hmm. what? You didn't need this to actually tell you that. But it's I think kind of some, embarrassing. But I think they do sometimes. I think they have to have it proven before they can actually take take a chance on something and um, gall, it was all you know. To me, I think they were all the factors that just made it extraordinary. So you have Patty Jenkins directing it, and you have gall being in it, and you have a terrific script. And and the audience, it was so long overdue, mm. and so for the audience to get that specific project was a gift from the gods, if right. you will, if you will. And for somebody I mean I didn't grow up as a fan of these characters but I've become one since I've played her and also because of my connection to the fans and all the fans have wanted all these years all these decades is to have her represented right. so now they're getting that Well you're too young to remember the Linda Carter incarnation and she's <laughs> She still looks fantastic when she well, looks her. Well, she's phenomenal. And yeah. I don't think I've ever given an interview where I haven't mentioned Linda Carter because right. if you think about what she accomplished in those three years the show ran, she carried the mantle for, or she carried the torch, whatever you want to call the it. The lasso. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm the here lasso. for you. I'm here for you, Susan. No, but she carried it for all these years. Um, there haven't been that many iterations of Wonder Woman. Right. So you have the comic books and you have the TV show. You have the animated TV show and now you have the feature films. But that was it. 
Right. That was it. And so for her to do that in only three years on that show, I mean, that's people still have these very strong associations with Linda. I'm always kind of interested just as a point of like the factory technique behind all this, who was also considered, Mm -hmm. who they passed on for Linda. Linda was fantastic. And who was like considered for the movie also. It's always kind of interesting. Man, we won't know though. You know, like we won't, we won't know. I know that, that for the animated series, Everybody read for it. And I know this because everybody told me they had read for mm-hmm. it. So if you were in L.A. at that time in 1999, 2000, you pro- and do voiceover and you're a woman, you probably read for... Hey everyone, it's Ethan, the executive director here at Brigade Radio 1. As many of you know, we produce a lot of radio content with people like director Michael Lang of Bones and X-Files, director Steve Sergic of Lost in Space, Daredevil, Luke Cage... We work with a lot of producers as well, from Cindy Caponera of Shameless to Jason Schumann of Role Models to Eric Linus Kaplan of Futurama and Big Bang Fury. What we need is partnership. Go to patreon.com slash brigade radio one. Become a partner today. Score yourself some concert tickets, VIP access, behind the scenes footage, and all kinds of other craziness. Get involved, become a partner. Help us not only deliver great radio content, but also help make the world a better place. Go to patreon.com slash brigade radio one.